All right, happy Saturday. Oh, sorry, I'm just like grinning all all big. Uh, oops, I don't know if that shows up on the recordings, but anyways, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's a Merle, he's a friend. So anyways, uh, kind of excited. I just might have done a thing, and I, I wanted to do a video recording of uh, documenting the day that I did that thing. But basically, while still being vague, because I like to try to keep my work and private life separate, um, I... Actually, let me back up real quick. Sorry to preface this video. This is the Llama Lounge, and as you can see, llamas can't get through this hallway very well. I mean, they can. Like, they're able to, but it just looks weird. Same with that. So, oh. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure that that wasn't, like, some kind of pit or something. But anyways, so I'm raising the roof by one block. So anyways, back to my story, uh, why I wanted to document today um, was because, so I work for a company, let's see, still being very vague, uh, a higher education and education establishment that travels around the world, sails around the world. And I'm just a systems admin, you know, technically junior systems admin, that's what um, my pay rate is. I'm still pretty new at the company, hence why I want to kind of keep that separate, especially from my YouTube stuff and I mean, not that my YouTube stuff's all that bad. I play some violent video games. I don't think I even really swear all that much, but, like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm also a dad, so it's like, I'm, I'm a little scaled back regardless, but, all right, let's see. So all the ceilings in the Llama Lounge. Sorry, yeah, this is the Llama Lounge as it is now. It's a work in progress um, for all the adopted llamas, for all the wandering traders that I trade with, and then I say good day, and I take their stuff, so... Anyway, it's kind of GTA about it. But anyways, now back to the thing. So I reached out to Mr. Beast Philanthropy. Now that one can be public. And, you know, people that have been watching the musings may have known, because I know I've mentioned it. I'm working on this project at work to donate laptops to my old work. Um, which I can say that one. I used to work over there. And, I don't know. That's, that's OSINT. Like, you got to be careful with what you say online. And anyways, you can tell I'm not a professional YouTuber. At least not yet. I've only been doing it for about a year. But... You know, I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. I want to do my educational videos and keep working on actual projects, but I know I need to get some more red for this too, but... Or something else. Maybe we can make it, like, yellow or something. But I kind of like the idea of a red... Yeah, let's do a red hallway. My kiddos are all about, like, that, the, the rainbow friends and so all that stuff, so... Anyways, yeah. So without going too long about this... Oh, I'm just so excited. So the idea is, is we visit a lot of countries, and if Mr. Beast Philanthropy is willing to donate some technology, then we can distribute that technology to these countries, you know, and relatively free. I mean, it depends on how much we're talking, because I know I brought, because I do IT, and I brought, I want to say, three, four computers? No, three computers, I think. But regardless, we were bringing, like, satellite dishes. Um, we did get the new Starlink. Uh, well, newish. It's been around for a few years, but as a ship sailing in you know maritime and stuff, it's hard to get internet. So we got the Starlink, and so that's pretty cool. And it, it's actually funny in hindsight because like a lot of people can simply just like Google me or LinkedIn and like figure out where I work and all that stuff, which is the premise of red teaming in cybersecurity. You do your active recon. That's why I'm like also hesitant, but at the same time, not really because I'm already publicly known like in my community. Like, not a whole lot, but it's like, you know, a lot of people know where I work and stuff like that. So it's not like private information, but at the same time, less is less said the better. But that's my rant on that. I guess this really, I don't know, I didn't want to like... I do got to say, this also marks another exciting time. I'm getting, uh, I got 200 views on the actual... Wait, is that right? Yeah, I want to say 200 on the actual musings, like the half an hour one. So whether they stuck around or not, I've, I've got to see the analytics. A lot of people jump off at like 10 seconds, you know, or a minute. But still, 200 versus the usual like 10, 20, that's pretty exciting. So just means that I might be able to start like, well, I need to produce better teaching materials. I was watching my streams the other day, and they're pretty trash. So but that was when I was streaming through Twitch, which don't get me wrong. Twitch is awesome if you want a social thing, like if you want to socialize and stuff. Here, we'll do a little harvesting while we talk, but um, but I don't know. I, I just don't think it's for me. Like, I like the interaction when I'm, like, teaching some stuff, but when I'm just gaming, like, maybe a message here and there is fine, but 
I don't know. Well, especially from some people. I take that back. There was a couple of people like, but it's just like the, the pressure and the anxiety of like, people are watching you. I mean, it's like, granted they're watching this stuff, but I'm not really doing anything spectacular or skillful. I'm just harvesting some crops and, you know, thinking through the world's problems or what have you, or at least trying to. I'm, you know, I don't kid myself. I know I'm only one person, but I'm one person that's doing something. So anyways, and that's why this is so exciting. And that's why today is, oh, yeah, I hope something happens. I mean, because if not, in fact, maybe I should wait to launch this video <laughs> or to put this video up on the YouTubes, and like just to see if I get a response. Because I just sent out an email, like you know, got to give them time to look into the thing. We did just uh, put out a video, um, so we're actually featured on the college tour, which is a show about colleges. And I oh, don't know, I just. I just keep cringing because my Twitter is so what they would call cringe nowadays. Not really bad, but like it's, I don't know, I get political because a lot of my stuff, and as you've known if you've watched some of my other musings, is like I talk about a lot about politics and not like not trying to lean one way or the other, but just trying to like make it to where anybody could come to some safe, peaceful conclusions. But anyways, I don't want to muck that up. But I call it one of the two taboos, and that's politics and religion. And it is a big part of cybersecurity because, I mean, people are, the human aspect is the biggest aspect of cybersecurity. People might not know that, but, you know, human error is the biggest reason that we have bre breaches or attacks. And human training is very big. That's why, you know, I went and did my boot camp for cybersecurity is because it's so in demand right now. And, and I already had a degree in tech. I had a, I have a degree in applied computing technology. So, ooh, let's get some, let's get some crops. Uh, these crops, I guess we were already harvesting pumpkins, but we can make some bone meal out of this. But anyways, uh, <laughs> where was I going with that? Ah, jeez. I'm just, Anyways, the two taboos, religion and politics. And the reason they're important to cybersecurity is because, yeah, the human element. There we go. Sorry, I got distracted thinking about crops. But anyways, um, actually, let's rearrange this a little bit. All right. Actually, that worked out nice. So anyways, um, I'm currently focusing on the human aspect of preventative blue teaming, as in... You know, it kind of sounds like a hippy-dippy thing, you know, as it's been known in the past, but people since the 70s have been trying to say, like, you know, we need to look out for each other, we need to care about the global community, we need to take care of each other, and stop, you know, letting petty differences lead to death and all this extreme stuff, you know, and, and all this stuff that we get tired of hearing about just because it's so prevalent here in America, and I don't want to get on any of those soapboxes, but what I'm saying is, for, in the interest of global security, uh, making sure everybody has secure access to technology is a part of that assurance, a part of that investment. Um, and my company and I have personally started a project where we donate old refurbished laptops to a local noodles. Like, you know, I, I worked there for a summer when I was trying in between jobs and they were really great to me. They took care of me. I made good money there. Like I got to eat for free every day. So it's really not a bad gig. I mean, and a lot of companies are starting to do that now. Granted, it's not meant for life. And I was actually... I was supposed to become a shift manager and then possibly even like a manager manager in the future. But, you know, the potential was there. I could have, I could have stayed there and had a career, but my passion is with helping people, which Noodles definitely does. They have a whole program where they help their employees, even besides this laptop thing. That's why I thought this laptop idea would be such a great idea is because they already do this, like where they'll at least loan money at like zero interest to their employees if they have a hardship or even give them money, depending on the situation. Like if you get into a car wreck or your family's injured, like that was the, one of the stories they were telling us is like, um, cause we had to do the training of course. And it was awesome. Like they gave these people, well, I forget the exact specifics because there's there a lot of training going on, but um, I got the gist of it where they were like, they were given a bunch of stuff. It was one of those extreme situations where it was like, oh my gosh. And the fact that they worked at Noodles and they're part of the Noodles family, it was like, all right, here we go. We'll take care of you. So anyways, and then, yeah, as you know, Mr. Beast Philanthropy, I'm just starting to get into the videos. Like I, I started with something I saw on the Twitters. And again, my Twitter is just so cringe because of some of my work, but and some of my, you know, interests too. Like I'm concerned, as a person should, about government and stuff. I hate talking about it because it's gotten to be so ugly. But I'm concerned. Same with religion, you know. Like, ugh. 
the two taboos. We'll just leave it at that. You can watch my other musings for that. But today is to document the day when I reach out, I send off an email to Mr. Beast Philanthropy, trying to link up our two organizations because like, I don't need anything from them. Like I'm good. I don't need anything from the organization, especially that organization, but even like Mr. Beast, like publicity stuff, like I'm good. That'd be cool. But like, I don't think anyone would turn down any of that. But at the same time, like I've actually donated a couple of laptops before this project, just when I finally had enough money to where I felt comfortable I'm not great, but you know, slightly comfortable for a while. And I had a couple of friends that were in need, you know, they can be re renamed nameless for now, of course, just like, and, and I don't want any recognition for that. It's awkward, it's weird, especially for people that are introverted, like, it's not the pleasant part of it. What the pleasant part is, is knowing that they are empowered, they're going to have a better chance to succeed, that kind of thing. And that's why I think I turned away from Twitch, is because, like, my face, you know, it's like, the whole time I'm talking, there's my face in the corner. It's like, yeah, okay, but it's a little, I don't want to say distracting, like, that's not the case, but, like, um... It's weird. It's strange. And public speaking is an art, and it takes skills. And I took a class in it. That was one of my first community college classes. But um, yeah, and I'm actually teaching my own kiddos it right now, like slowly. I'm taking my time with it because it, it's a very stressful thing. But you become a lot less stressed when you're able to do it, and then you go and do it in front of a camera. So I don't know. Mr. Beast has got to be like, I don't know. I hope he's doing okay with it. You know, like. I don't know. Maybe he loves it. Maybe he's doing fine with it. But like, I don't know. But the fact of he's doing what he's doing and he's getting people to do this stuff, he's riling up the, the world, basically. I mean, he's a, he's a worldwide known figure that I don't think many people have anything bad to say about him even. Like, maybe people know some sketchy stuff he did in his past. I don't know. We're all people. But like, as far as, you know, all the stuff he's done has just outweighed anything. Oh, gosh. This would be awkward if he killed someone. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Sorry, we should strike that from the record. I, that just reminds me of one of the videos of his that I was watching, where he's like making a time pod or time capsule video. And he's like, oh gosh, what if I'm dead? <laughs> it's just like kind of an extreme concept. It's like, wait, you know, so oh, please be safe, Mr. Beast, and everyone too. That's like the, the point of global security. It's not so we can police the world. It's out, except for, I just heard it. Sorry, you're about to see why I have so many llamas. And why I also carry... Oh, no, he's on the bridge. He's on the bridge. Get out of here. Although, actually, first, let's trade. Okay, is that blue eyes? Yes. I will take the blue eyes, and... I mean, I like those. They're expensive, though, and flowers we can get. Nah, that's good. But then I take the leads, Geronimo. I gotta find where they went. Trying not to bust any more of my crops. And I try to save the llamas because as weird as it sounds, and I play some vi very violent video games, as you know, if you've watched my Bloodborne musings, that's what those are, it's super violent. Um, I don't like killing llamas. Don't care for it. And yeah, so. We're going to try to go uh, to the llama farm, or the llama lounge. There you go. I have a couple of, like, uh, I want to say, like, gathering places for the llamas. Can you fall? There we go. All right. I mean, I don't want them to, like, get fall damage, but at the same time, I think they can do that. It's just you don't want to break the leads as you're taking them. But come on. Oh, uh, it's like, I'm doing pretty good with these stairs, doing backwards. You know, my high school sweetheart actually used to be able to ski backwards. It was so awesome. Like, she was pretty, pretty sick at it, like skiing in general. I was okay at snowboarding. Eh, it wasn't the best. Oh, no. You just went around the tree? Okay. Well, physics doesn't really matter sometimes. That's fine. As long as it doesn't break, because that's annoying. Okay, whatever. You can trample the crops. That's fine. Oh, gosh. Is it going to break? How? We're really testing the limits of leads. All right, come on. We're almost there. Almost there. Come to the llama lounge. No, and that's one of the problems is they got to like, be pushed off a little bit. And then, oh, and then try to go down. Come on. Straight, straight shot, straight shot. Yeah, I mean, if you keep it kind of tight, like almost a breaking point, you can coerx them. Oh, come on. There we go. I was going to say, in small distances, I think they can fall. So... 
yay, you've got some more friends. And originally I had them tied up to post because I didn't know if they despawned. Then I realized just how messed up that seemed. So I got rid of the posts and there. You have to like right click or left, left trigger on them. And then I have a collection of leads. Notice they're not spitting at me, but they're, you know, they're like letting me know. Oh, oh wow. Completely forgot about this. But yeah, as you can see, I had some posts. I was tying it. I also had a lot of hay because I was like, you know what? Oh, Got to give them their hay. I was trying to make like pillars or something or something cool. But anyways. Oh, yeah. I have a couple little hidden spaces that I was trying to do. Like maybe like a little, I don't know, like some piston stuff. But I need to get better at redstone. Like that, that still eludes me. And I've studied circuit logic. I've studied computer architecture. <laughs> I've taken class, And that was actually one of the classes I did really well in. But um. I got like a B in that, and I got a C, almost a D in my other computer class at the time. So it's like, oh, at least I know gate logic and stuff. But And state machines. That's something I, I would really like to do a video one day about state machines, but I would need to understand them a little better. Like, I, I get the concept, but actually, like, doing them in practice, oh, that is... Well, so basically, to explain a state machine, yeah, we're going to go into a little computer science here in this. So, might as well. Um, so, think of like a, a roadwork sign as a state machine. And in its initial state, it'll say one thing, the beginning message. And then in state two, it'll say a different message. In state three, four, and so on. Depending on how complex the state machine is, it'll have a different text, a different function. Maybe, you know, you could also think of like those LED lights. I almost put some underneath my car back in the day. And actually, if that, uh, so I'm always paranoid that I'm going to fall through a hole. But anyways, um, if you did see the name of the person that messaged me at the beginning of this video, um, I'm pretty sure it's blurred, but if you did see it, that's my buddy that, you know, where was I going with all this? He was going to soup up his car. He's like my old high school friend, like a childhood friend, and like, you know, and he would be doing some of this philanthropy stuff. Like if, if we had stuff back in my day to where we could instantly record and share video, oh, I mean, granted, we only did a Monty Python skit, for a school project on video, but like, you know, video production, well, it was a whole degree. You know, I know somebody that, that's their whole, there was, that was their major. You know, it's basically tech, but tech for video production. So it's just amazing that now we have like the tech in our pockets. Not as good, and he would definitely agree. He'd be like, no, no, like don't, don't mince words here. That's, uh, that's not the same, but um, yeah. And, and also you got to think like video production has so much else going into it. Like you got the, the connectivity, the network, I know that it's like one of HP's biggest functions. Actually, I don't know if that's public knowledge, but we won't say the name of the show, but they help with data management and I think cloud storage. So I think that's pretty publicly known. But anyways, um, like I want to do that, but I also just realized I just did all that crop harvesting. So yeah, so we'll get some more red bricks and we'll, or red blocks and we'll put that up, make that whole hallway. And we'll maybe even make an emerald hallway. Like, why not? show off on the drip. I'm, le I'm learning the slang, too. Also, I think there is stuff in there, but anyways. We'll go to show you what... Uh, and at some point, this world, or this realm that I have, is... Uh, it's going to be for all of this uh, Minecraft experiments. I've only got a couple right now that I can do, and I haven't even done them yet. I've just set up the equipment. This is one of them, the setup here, which you've probably seen in some of the other musings. It's to convert, it's like the biggest form of converting, well not the biggest, sorry, it's the biggest with like this many items, like the double wide chest, you can do single chests, and what this does is you put some crops in it, and then the hopper pulls it down into the, oh, what is that? <laughs> um, I'm trying to blank here, what is that? Composter, there you go, yeah. I used to compost back in the day. My family always had a garden, but I was just drawing a blank. Anyways, and you can do that, and that resets like what the contents of the the composter are, because if you can see in there, anyone who knows that is like it fills up with produce. So it, you know, any kind of fruit, veggie. Um, some I know uh, sugar cane can do it, but I don't know. I feel like there's still some things. Cacti, you can put cactus in there. Um, you can put whole pumpkins in there, but we're not going to because that's more valuable. That's how I get my emeralds. But this way you can have the double chest up top 
and then it also gets pulled down into here as bone meal, and then you can have the double chest to collect it. So I say that's the biggest you can have with this amount of stuff because you can definitely chain a lot more chests and hoppers. Of course, by that right, you can make anything into a massive collection and sorting unit. So that's a whole different thing. But this, I've tried to even fill up one of these before and it's hard because you have to like have a full inventory of stuff and then you have to have another chest that's not hooked up to one of these systems that has like a full inventory of stuff or at least, you know, the complement of like, because I don't, I always keep this stuff. This is permanent in my inventory. Same with the emeralds. But anyways, yeah. So that's my bone meal, um, bone meal farm, I guess you call them farms. But I'd say like my bone meal producer units. And yeah, oh, and as you can see, let's, let's take a look at that. Because it takes me a while to even get, yeah, a few stacks of bone meal. Because it takes like several pieces of... Uh, produce or crops to get one piece of bone meal. I think it's like, and that was one of the things I wanted to test. That's why I have four of them in a row like that. Not just for mass production, but I can, you know, that's a nice perk or bonus. But I did this so I could test and see, okay, a stack of wheat gives this much, or a stack of uh, beets yields this much, and so, and so on, to test all the different possible combinations. And just have that recorded. I mean, because why not? And I'm sure somebody's done it. Like, what hasn't someone done, you know, like in this day and age, but now that I also freed up a lot of my inventory, I can kind of harvest a little more. Not the ideal, but you know, it's a trade-off. Like, do you want to walk all the way back to your storage area and do stuff? And actually already, uh, you can break it as fast with the lead, but you can also repair as you go. And this is why I take out the, the wandering traders. Sorry, that, that would be probably important for context. I don't enjoy trading and killing wandering traders. That's not like, I used to do that in GTA, and we all know like what that's referring to, but um, no, like now that I'm older and I'm like, I'm, it's just more, I guess that was logical too. It was complete removal of ethics in favor of logic. Like, you know, you had some money, now you don't, and you want to get your money back. <laughs> like, and you're curious. <laughs> Uh, and that's another exciting thing about tech, and I, well, I, I, we don't need to talk about that in the same like Mr. Beast philanthropy announcement video, but I mean, I'm also already chopping these up into shorts, so these, these can wander from here to there, back to here, then to over there. That's the point of musings, it's just to kind of get it all out, get the thought down, recorded. Uh, it's kind of like fear and loathing, but not nearly as intense. <laughs> and not nearly as illegal either, so no, I'm not doing anything bad. So, now, in the, I'm pretty excited about this, because even if they just reply and say, no, thank you, that just seems awesome, because to get a reply from someone, I don't know, like, I've, I'm still pretty new to the Twitters, and how, like, a lot of the big Twitter accounts interact with people, uh, it, it's pretty interesting, like, I don't want to do a bunch of name dropping, because, again, I don't know if people would be embarrassed to be named on this video, but I'll definitely do some name dropping once I, uh, well, I guess it kind of comes with the territory. If I get more popular, the people that are connected to me get more popular. We all rise. And that's one thing I really did like about Twitch. Like, sorry, let me go back to that a little bit. Like, Twitch was really fun, and it still is. I like to go watch sometimes. Like, I'll watch people play video games and chat with them, or even just, just lurk. Like, but I don't know. I'm also still in between about the concept of telling them that you're going to lurk, or just lurking and just being quiet about it. And the only time that I really would do that, and this is the conclusion I came to, is uh, it's not that cool because people get an, some people can get annoyed about you saying it. Like, oh, great, thanks. Like, you know, you've, you've got enough uh, investment <coughs> to come be a body in my chat to, just to boost my numbers. But you're also admitting to where anybody can see, like, oh, no, I'm just fake watching you. So I'm not watching the ads, like, or I'm only half listening to the ads. And, you know, and it's kind of putting them on front street, too, if you think about it. Like, if I had, like, 10 people watching and five of them said, hey, I'm lurking, like, did, did I really have 10 people watching? Or did I have, like, seven and a half, maybe, with, like, they heard it in the background or something? Which, it, you know, it's fine. But for the people that are trying to boost their numbers, say, to make affiliate, which, you know, I was able to make affiliate, and I even had, like, a decent amount of money going. But then I was like... Oh, uh, and also like Mr. Beast early videos, I wasn't doing it for me. Like, and in fact, several of the, the streams, I started off by saying, you know, hey, donate to the Loveland Orchestra. And that's okay. People can know that I'm from Northern Colorado. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of orchestras. 
and you should be too. And but also don't make it weird. If you see me there, you know, maybe say hi. I don't know, or maybe just don't say anything if I don't know you. <laughs> like I don't, that sounds mean. I'm not mean like that, but you know, you got to remember, people get anxiety from me, like meeting strangers, or you know, which is, it's fine. Strangers can become friends and all that, but also. In this day and age, you got to kind of keep up your guard because until we actually realize a lot of these philanthropy projects, there are people out there that give me job security, as in I'm a cybersecurity professional and I defend against cyber attacks, which is another reason why I'm kind of segmented with what I share, but at the same time, any, any hacker worth their salt will already know like everything about me. So, And that's just what's publicly available. And it, it scares me, but I like to hope that even if I do get hacked, like I was watching this uh, social engineer, it was this uh, seminar from Veeam the other day. It was awesome. Like, I definitely highly re recommend Veeam for your backup solutions if you haven't. See, I'm already advertising that stuff, but no, I mean, seriously though, for ransomware protection, you have to have some backup system in place. And personally, I'm working on some automation scripts, but also like Veeam is a great tool, you know, and especially if you don't really have, well, I don't know, for like smaller companies and organizations that might not necessarily have a lot of like developers working, you know, it's cool that you can automate stuff in the future, but until then, <coughs> you need to have an offsite backup somewhere because ransomware is a very clear and present danger. That's sounding like some military there. Don't worry. I've, not that it's bad to be in the military. I haven't been in the military, but I support a lot of my friends that have been in the military, but I also worry because I've seen some concerning mindset from people in the military. Just saying. I mean, I got my buddy, he's a little scary. He's got like 50 guns now, and he's only been out for like, like he's been for, been in prison. No, he's only been out of service for, well, I guess maybe it's been a few years now, but still, like, even when I was back up in the mountains, I only had, okay, I had about like 20 or so guns, but still, like, that was not when I was in the city. Now that I'm in the city, zero. I, and that's okay that you know that, because if anyone breaks in here, I could kill you with just about anything else in this house, so... You know, have fun. Please don't. But I won't hesitate. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and I have done Kung Fu. I have done martial arts for a bit. Sword training. I think I actually, no, I take that back. I do have a, like some swords and stuff. And I like knives and chains and yeah. <laughs> but no guns because I don't, you know, they're irrelevant. In a, in a city, it's really not that. I mean, now that it, like I finally, I don't know. Like when you when you're living with like college roommates and stuff, you really can't because you can't trust them. They're gonna drink, you know. They might do some drugs or something. They're like, you know, you really shouldn't. You know, I'm not advocating for that, but like it's college and people are people and you're living with people and they're figuring out their lives, learning, like growing pains and all that. <clears throat> they might get into your guns, so that's why when I came to college, I left all my guns back home. And then I realized I didn't really need like. It was something fun to do when you didn't have stuff, but now we've got like malls and movie theaters and like all the fancy stuff. I can go to Denver whenever I want. Like, I could fly to anywhere in the world from DIA, and I'm finally like all starting to be able to afford stuff like that. But you know, and again, that is definitely no, I do not care if it takes me some time. Like, I'm on my way. That's why I want to help other people with tech because it's like, I'm good. Now let's get you good. And you need these skills and the, these, really it's the concepts. And that's what builds the skills. It's like once you start understanding scalability and all the things that I keep repeating in these videos. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and run down them. So once you understand algorithms, scalability, and algorithms again being a method or process to accomplish a goal or to sol solve a problem, which is pretty synonymous, but I do make that distinction because, you know, some people might say, oh, well, it's for problem solving. Oh, well, I'm, you know, trying to, reach a goal. Like, yes, both can be accurate, but you need to not get hung up in the vernacular, in the wording or the phrasing of like, you know, how people say things. And that's one of the biggest problems in the world is because not everybody speaks English. I say that, but having traveled the world a little bit, and I'm only just starting, I'm going to be going to a lot more places, but um, pretty much everybody does speak English. So that is misleading. I guess the proper thing to say is English has become so prevalent that the majority of people that interact with uh, people from other countries visiting for you know, business pleasure, whatever, um, uh, they know how to speak at least enough English to get by. Just like when you're trying to travel to a place, unless you're traveling to a lot of places, then it's you know, maybe not very feasible for you to do, but it's at least good to learn a few of the words. That way you know, you're not completely dumbfounded if they start trying to speak in their native tongue and you're just like, uh... 
Because I did do that. I can say I went to Costa Rica, and actually that buddy that messaged me at the beginning of this video, we went to Costa Rica together, and then we have another buddy that we're trying to... He's an Xbox user, so we got to figure that out. <laughs> like, I'm actually even thinking about... I don't want to say this, because pride is kind of a thing, too, but I'm almost ready to like donate him a, a copy of Destiny, because it's like super expensive. He's still looking for work. His wife's looking for work. She's a doctor in... Um, or she has a doctorate, sorry. Got to make that distinction. Um, but she's done very well for herself as a scientist, um, a, a biologist, uh, I believe, um, wildlife specifically. But um, anyways, yeah, so very uh, hardworking, dedicated to education, and you know, I'm actually going to try to get them involved in my program. I have been, actually, but it's kind of hard. It's easier said than done. And a lot of times you got to like plan out years in advance just because there's so many people trying to work on the ship, and it's like, yeah, so... Okay, I can at least say that. I work for, <laughs> and then people put it together, like, oh, there's a school there, and yeah. But, yeah, we sail on a ship and we teach higher education. Not me, I mean, I just do IT, but you know, many fine folks from around the country come and teach um, in our program, which is also a nonprofit. Like, I mean, we, we still get paid, we get our paychecks, and they take care of us, we get our benefits and all that, so there's no real sacrifice in that aspect. But the company as a whole, like our board is completely different from, you know, a for-profit business. We're not about shareholders. We don't, you know, we're not tied to, we are tied to donors. And that's the thing. And that's why I got to watch what I say. And, you know, if, you'll, if you've stuck with me through some of these rants, you know that I really try my best not to be offensive. I mean, because that is key to global security and even local security. Like respect, dignity, all of these things are very important. And that that short that I put out, that one that got... Pretty popular. I mean, not as popular as like my other shorts, which, you know, that's why I like still playing the Minecraft and I will still continue to definitely share. If I see an ox axolotl family, that was so cool, especially, and so I have a daughter and that, the, the mama axolotl was like a rainbow or daddy, I, whatever. But like, it was, a, it was a rainbow, like, and so. Did it have a horn? I honestly would not put it past Mojang to just slip in like a unicorn axolotl. I haven't been following up, so let me also backtrack a little bit. I will name drop. Um, I watch Waddles, this uh, this YouTuber that does some amazing Minecraft videos. Fantastic! Like he he does these great uh, walkthroughs and guides and explains in depth all the the mechanics of the game. Like I that's what I actually started doing. I was trying to mix like explaining the mechanics like in honor of Waddles, and I mentioned him, you know, definitely in those videos, like not to try to seem like I'm stealing ideas, which I totally was, but also a lot of that stuff, you know, I might not have learned from Waddles. I've, I've played the game as well, but in fact, the very first time I've ever seen Minecraft was back in, well, at CSU. I was in the computer science building, and uh, there was a kid playing it in the computer lab, and I was like, all right, that's awesome, but at the same time, you know, the, these aren't your computers. You really shouldn't be doing that. I didn't say anything, but, you know, and I didn't go tell a professor anything. You know, I didn't go snitch him out because while, yes, he was breaking a rule, it's like, that's on him, you know, and CSU's got things in place that they can tell what you're doing. Like, I'm sure it was documented. Everybody signs in with their own account, so there's accountability. <laughs> See what I did there? There's accountability with your account. Ah, that's good to know, too. Also, I might mention that I got a minor in business administration, so I did also take a lot of business -y classes like marketing, finance, you know, stuff like that, accounting. And actually, I just kind of made that, put two and two together. So I was today years old when I realized an account, well, no, because an account is a one-time instance of the accountability, or an account provides accountability to a business or a person, which here in capitalistic America... Corporations are also people, kind of. Not really, but yeah. And that's up for some debate. But either way, it doesn't matter. I mean, oh, okay, so, sorry. That part of it doesn't matter. Another big part of my side projects for cybersecurity is, like, social problems, social dilemmas. And that's actually a class that was required at CSU for freshmen. We all had to take current world problems to study the the world landscape of what's going on like what are people struggling with or where are people still fighting and then I went on to take a sociology class where I stud studied um, the Darfur conflict over in Africa I forget the specific country that's in but it, it was bad if you watch uh, the movie Invisible Children 
I, I hope that's still free on the YouTubes. It was when I was around or when I was studying it, but it's very concerning. There's, it's about child soldiers, and that was a very big, you know, a big concern for my current, you know, girlfriend at the time. Um, and it still is for her. Not, I mean, even though we're we're not together, like she was still quite the little activist, and you know, trying to champion. In fact, I I would describe her as a Pamela Anderson of sorts. <coughs> Not to be a pig or a perv, but yes, also in that way. But no, like just how she spoke of her things like PETA and stuff. Um, granted, I feel like PETA goes a little too far sometimes, but I also am a big fan of South Park, so that's why I'm a little biased. But at the same time, they, it is good that they're doing something because like a lot of like yeah, animal cruelty and stuff, the stuff you'd think that most people would be able to get behind. But then, you know, it's it's... It's amazing what you learn when you find out more about people and you study more circles and more groups and it's like, or just a lot of the things and even ourselves, like things we take for granted. You go to the store, you know, you go pick up some meat and you're just like, oh, well, you don't think about the backstory of that. Granted, I'm not a vegetarian, but I respect them. I do have some friends that are vegetarians. Uh, my sister was even tried being a vegan for a while. She couldn't do it. I mean, she she admitted that she's like, you know, I feel bad, but at the same time, like, I can't let my guilt get in the way of, like, I'm still a person. I still, like, eat these things. And we are. We're animals at the end of the day, but we can be much more humane about things. And that's why uh, I kind of tie into politics. Oh, these are arcs, by the way. I was watching some Rick and Morty last night, and, like, it was the episode where they talk about story arcs. And so, like, my rambling stories... They tend to arc back and forth. And it would actually be kind of cool to see a graph plotted with like the topics that I talk about and then like if I come back to them or if I don't, and, like, or how much I talk about them in a, in a given video. That would be cool. Because I'm still practicing to be better at making YouTubes. You know, I'm up at like 138 subscribers, which is awesome. You know, thank you everybody for subscribing. Um, and doing the likes, you know, you, I can't tell you how awesome it is when people like your videos. Like, even if you don't watch it, like, whatever, throw them a like, it's free. No, I'm just kidding. You should at least watch it and, you know, dole out the likes for the people that deserve them. And watching my old videos, especially the Twitch ones, which are all grainy and, like, kind of blurry. Because um, I don't have the best internet connection, but also, I'm using Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, so there's going to be some quality cutbacks. And that's why I'm recording these now and then uploading them to YouTube. Actually, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to I'm going to upload this today cuz this is a good musing and you know, it'll be awkward if Mr. Beast Philanthropy doesn't do something, but at the same time that's their right, like, you know. And I just think it'd be really neat because if this works, you know, all the countries that we go to, like I was just in Dubai and Mumbai. I was in Mumbai, India and Dubai, uh UAE, which is United Arab Emirates. And like, and that's actually my picture in my YouTube uh, channel is actually a picture I took in Dubai. So really cool place, a um, lot of money. And I will say this, uh, I, I met with my college roommate from Saudi Arabia. He met me in Dubai and he was telling me all about Saudi Arabia. And granted, yes, that's another area of taboo. They've got their own human rights stuff going on, just like how we have like death by cop here in America. So let's not, let's not get on a pedestal here. But anyways, um, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, a little backstory to that, a little context, if you will. There are people that are concerned with the human rights violations in Saudi Arabia, specifically some of their penalties for breaking the law. Like they could, you know, lose a hand. They could even be put to death. We can be put to death here in the U.S. So right there, you know, it depends on where you're at. And I guess it, you know, it depends. It's, everything is situational. It's not like they outright just kill people off the street, like sometimes we have here in America, you know. But again, situational, like cops don't go out and just, you know, go shoot people. Like that's not, you know. But we provide situations and circumstances that allow for that kind of behavior from both a suspect and law enforcement. That's what people don't often realize is like, you know, it's a two-way street. There are people there, too, doing a job, trying to keep you safe, you know, and they have to deal with some really ridiculous things, myself included. Like, back when I was younger and a knucklehead, like, I did some stupid things, and there's probably some stories that could be told. <laughs> and we won't tell them now, but, you know, maybe if I hit a million subscribers, there we go. If I get a million subscribers, I will tell you my memoirs. Ah, oh, phew, that's nerve-wracking. But it's actually... Uh, useful, I've found, because we are all people, and it is good to know that, I mean, I'm a little hesitant to tell my kids about it, and that's going to happen way down the road, so I, yeah, well, a million subscribers, that sounds good, because they're getting older now to where I think I'd be okay with it, that's probably what, at least like in a couple of years before I'd hit a million. I'm at 138, and I don't really do a lot of this. My musings are, 
I, I don't do enough uh, video um, editing, too. I haven't really found a program yet, and sorry, that's a, you know, not trying to make it an excuse, but that's just some explanation as to why, like, I haven't really dedicated a lot of time either into this stuff. Like, just the last musings and this one, I tried to pause a little bit because I noticed I cut myself off at the very beginning of recording last time. So, I'd say, you know, happy Saturday, stuff like that, which just awkwardly starts again. And being dynamic is important because it's <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah, people that know me know that I'll just randomly just start talking about things like we'll say, oh, nice weather. And oh, did you know that social engineering can have this, this, and this? And, like, and you need to be careful. And here is something, a disclaimer. So as I record about this, the other thing I don't like about streaming is, you know, all the OSINT, which is open source intelligence. And basically that means if you leave your computer on and you take a picture and you put it on the Instagrams, which I actually just made private, um, that's visible to anybody that's following you. And if you have public social media, which a lot of people do, you know, anything you use, like if they find out you have a, you know, an Android or a Mac phone or an Apple phone, like, you know, then they can start tailoring their malware to attack you. And people, there are people out there that are watching, probably even watching this. And that's what you've got to always remain a little paranoid and be like, would I feel comfortable if like someone was trying to watch this and trying to steal my bank account or something? You know, because that's the big thing. And that's why cybersecurity is so important on the preventative team side as well, or blue teaming, because we can realize a lot of potential. And, and this is why I love uh, what Elon Musk is doing. Now, granted, again, a very taboo topic. A lot of people have mixed opinions about him, just because, and mainly because of his political affiliation, I noticed. Like, you know, the guy can work in solar panel industries. He can donate, you know, millions of dollars to his, I think it was his brother or someone's company that was close to him that did solar panels. And people focus on, oh, it's his brother. And it's like, well, yeah, family comes first. Like, that's kind of rule number one. I mean, my family comes first. I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to help your family too. And that's the thing that's lost on people. And that's why I did that pride short is because, and maybe this will be even a short too, because like, all right, let's see how I can phrase this and try to keep it in like within a minute. Um, and actually, where are we at? So I know where to look for it. 40, oh, geez, this is getting long. All right, so about 40, there you go, 42. So 42, if anyone is a fan of Douglas Adams and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 42 is the meaning of life. And that's the question, and then people get the answer, but then they forget the question. Or there's some like really mind gymnastics that happen there. It's a really great book. Um, you should check it out. Uh, in fact, you can get, like I think it's like seven books all in one, but you can get like the massive big book. And you, know, you probably can't... I wouldn't read it all in one sitting, but there's some really interesting stuff in there. Anyways, I digress, but... Um, 42 in the computer science sense is an asterisk for the ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, -I, um, yeah, that's right, for ASCII text. And that means a wild card for everything. So, and then when you start getting into like bash scripting, it's, you know, use a star dot, star dot txt. So find me all the files that end in dot txt. It's a wild card. And I, I think it's kind of interesting because that still relates to, what Douglas Adams was saying is because 42 is the meaning of life, meaning everything, all the experiences you can do um, in a way that allows the most amount of experiences for other people. So if you add that caveat, then you, it scales to also include, hey, go experience everything, but maybe don't kill people or don't wrong people, you know, because then that might hinder them from, well, I mean, if you kill them, obviously that hinders them, but from experiencing experiences. And that's not, that's not okay. Who are you to decide when someone is done experiencing life? And, and it's hard to say stuff like that. See, even right there, it's like, bah, no. Because you also have to add a caveat there. Most religions try to keep people in line so they can be peaceful with other people. So the most amount of people can experience the most amount of good experiences. See, there you go. You've got to add that disclaimer, good experiences. So... I don't know. 42 is just really interesting, and I don't know for sure if that's what Douglas Adams was intending. Um, I believe his stuff was on the radio back in the 70s, I want to say. And I feel bad, because I really should be looking this up, but I'm in the middle of a game, so... Um, anyways, I'm in the middle of amusing, so I'm not going to... I have been known to look things up before, but... I don't know. I feel like that's kind of boring to watch. Like, you can Google it, and you can correct me in the comments. There you go. I also hate being cringe about the YouTube stuff, and that's probably why I'm still just, you know, part of why. Because I'm still learning, I'm not dedicating a lot of time, and I don't say like and subscribe all the time. 
But if you like it, then like it. If you want to subscribe, then subscribe. It's free. I'm not your supervisor, as old fighting cowboy would say. That's another one of my favorite YouTubers, but he does a bunch of like Dark Souls games. And so you'll notice I do some Bloodborne myself, and I might get into some Dark Souls. I'm completely trash at it, so that's why I like watching Cowboy. But <laughs> I'm getting better. Like Bloodborne, I'm finally figuring out. Like I actually kind of was almost doing like a speed run. And I know someone that does that, one of my cybersecurity colleagues. He actually got affiliate status. Uh, I think he got up to like 150 or 200 followers on Twitch, which again, that's free too. Um, you just have to put up with seeing a bunch of notifications if they're an active streamer, which is fine. I mean, I remember trying to jump in on a stream that I wanted to watch, and I felt bad because she streamed at a certain time. I was too lazy to go look it up. But then if I saw her, I'd be like, oh, I got like five, ten minutes. I can go watch for a bit. And so and that's why Twitch is really cool, and I'll still keep doing that. But as far as streaming, yeah, I might stream on YouTubes just because, well, one, the indirection, too. Let's ramble about that a little bit, and then we'll call it a day, because I actually got to get back to doing some stuff. But uh, yeah, the, the indirection of recording via Twitch on a computer in the other room, you know, that's farther away from the router, that I should hardline, but yeah, I don't know. It's, then, you, then you're tethered to wherever the router is. Or you could get multiple routers, which, you know, I'm, but again, I'm more focused on giving out laptops to other people that can't afford the first laptop versus where I've got like 60 computers. And just kidding. I've got like, let's say like five. But anyways, and a lot of those are projects. They're in transition. Just like, if throw back to my relevancy and irrelevancy of labels. Let's look at that timestamp. We're at 46 uh, and 20. So the relevancy and irrelevancy of labels is a concept that I've been working on. Um, definitely not anything new. Uh, people have figured this out a while. Uh, things like racism, labels, all that good stuff. Well, not good stuff, but things that need to be addressed. Um, but it's good that people are investigating and trying to define what it is and what the problem is with it. And so I just kind of tweaked it a little bit by saying the relevancy and irrelevancy of labels. Meaning, is it relevant? Does it help the situation? Or should it just, is it better left unsaid? And that goes for everyone, myself included, um, specifically with things like homelessness. Uh, people experiencing homelessness, people transitioning through homelessness, trying to transition out of homelessness. You know, try not to get caught up on how you say it at the same time, because even saying transitioning, that could be a taboo thing for other things going on right now. Don't let that hinder your thinking. Like, you know, it's a temporary situation. Nobody wants to be homeless. Nobody looks forward to being homeless. Maybe look, they look forward to some of the freedoms that come along with that. I know a lot of times, like, getting out of a relationship with someone or, you know, moving out of a family home. And they got to struggle for a bit and they think, oh, this is normal. The next thing you know, they're, you know, panhandling on the side of the road or doing whatever they can to survive. And, you know, and that includes their substance abuse, too, if they have that going on, because that is how you survive. Part of how a lot of people survive in that situation. So it's sad, but it's, you know, it's a sad fact of life. Anyways, the more that we can do about it, both... Um, physically and mentally, like we can actually donate things, we can make sure that things can get to the right places, we can try to get the, them the resources like uh, the apartment style housing that we're trying to start up here in Fort Collins or um, Denver's doing monthly stipends for people experiencing homelessness that qualify, like giving them money every month. Uh, I actually voted on that recently, eh, actually maybe like a year ago. But anyways, one of the cool things about voting, you get to vote on stuff like that. And I voted yes, of course. Like. But um, yeah, so people experiencing homelessness, especially with COVID too, because that threw everybody for a world. Companies had to shut down. You know, it was hard on businesses and people alike. So keep that in mind next time, you know, you're advocating for, oh, companies need to pay more. Well, if they're surviving, if they're barely struggling to hold on, then yeah, maybe leave them out of that. And that's one of the things that's like less popular topic for a lot of people. But then it's like, use some common sense. You got to... Like, if the company doesn't survive, then the employees don't have jobs, period. And then you got a bigger problem than, oh, are they getting paid enough? So, granted, businesses need to pay their people enough to live off of or give them opportunity to get to the point where they can make enough to live off of. Because that's the other thing people don't realize is, like, you got to put in the work, too. You can't just be like, oh, I want... That's why a lot of people get angry at, like, handouts or raising the minimum wage without proposing any way to counterbalance that. And even that, I know probably going to get some backlash because like the minimum wage needs to be high enough to where it's worth it to work yes but at the same time 
it needs to be low enough to where if it's just a job like a summer job or like you know you're learning how to work you're you know you're still in high school or something like that like that's what those child labor laws are for for the youngsters to be working those types of jobs like at like a restaurant or a fast food place or you know where they're just learning how to interact with people or you know run a cash register or basic functions of a company or a business you know but it, when you're older you got kids and all that then you need to work a little harder you need to become a shift manager or a supervisor or you know you need to promote within that company and you need to provide enough value to where you know that company can afford to pay you what you need to be paid so and a lot of people do get that and that's what you know oh whoops that's something that you learn if you go to college and stuff if you learn business stuff like finance accounting and all that and how to run a business um and a lot of people go for their mba their masters in business I forget what the A stands for. It's like Master's Business Association. Oh, that's weird. Just like my, my degree is a... Uh, oh, whoops. Let's get some veggies. Oh. And actually, yeah, we got to wrap it up soon. This video is ridiculously long. So, all right, anyways, we'll leave it at that. Um, the relevancy and irrelevancy of labels in regards to how we address each other and ourselves too it's inwardly facing as well you got to be careful with that you don't want to pigeonhole yourself you don't want to pigeonhole others like people can change their minds they can change their opinions they can change their religion they can change their political be beliefs nothing is set in stone in that aspect you can try but like you might wake up one day and be like oh i want to do this or i want to do things this way so yeah anyways i digress it's about time to go so Alright, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next musing. I'm going to continue on and get these uh, emeralds, but for now, I'm going to cut it short on the video. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you later.